Today's scripture is from the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 9. It is the gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 9. I hope that we can all hear the voice of our living God when we read the scriptures together. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Amen. Humans are being with individual names. This philosophically can be explained as humans are being who gives names, who distinguish objects by names. Also, we can understand through experience that humans have names and are also beings who treasures the precious names. As described, humans have names and are beings who have abilities to take high regards of the name. Animals can have names given by people, but they do not have abilities to treasure their names. Only humans live to honor their names. Humans are people who live by putting their character in their names. We live for our own honor. That is why people can stand when their names are treated unfairly or being taken lightly. That is why people say that it is better to die than to dishonor in their name. And sometimes they lay down their lives for their own names and honor. In order to protect his honor, some people would rather be poor or do difficult things for their name. They sometimes go through difficult tasks to protect their honor. They do not compromise. A soldier who went to f fight in the war would rather die than turn around and run away. Imagine if someone turned down on his honor to save his own life. Such a person will have no choice but to be treated lowly as a worthless human being. Just like this, humans know how to value their name and its honor. That is why we make every effort to be nice and not to be greedy so that we are not called a thief. We try to be nice and to follow the law so that we are not called a bad person. We study hard so that we are not called as the ignorant or the stupid person. And to protect one's honor by keeping etiquette and courtesy to keep our parents' names in honor. It is a human quality to be unable to tolerate the loss of one's honor or being treated unfairly even if one endures other things. Where did these qualities come from? Where did this special quality that other animals don't have come from? This human quality to respect one's name and to want it to be honored perhaps comes from God's nature. It does comes from God's nature. As humans created an image of God, we have the qualities of knowing names and valuing one's names because that is how God is. The Bible says clearly God also has a name, and for his name's sake, for his own honor, he acts as devoted as men, and more devoted than men. Let's look at what Moses said to, that's what God said to Moses. 
In Exodus chapter 3, verse 15, God also said to Moses, says, Say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name by which I am to be remembered from generation to generation. As Moses left to rescue the people of Israel, God gave his name and clearly pointed out that it it was not a temporary name, but an eternal name. He also says that it is a name that will be remembered by all generations to generations. Also through words of Isaiah, God said that God is the one who keeps honor through his name. In Isaiah chapter 42, verse 8, I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not give glory to another or my praise to idols. Jehovah is the name of God, and with this name God acts. And whenever he has a relationship with humans, he wants that name to be remembered by human. The name Jehovah, Yewa, therefore reveals and signifies God himself. And in that God's name, name, God honor rests, and he wants to receive the glory worthy of his name. He says he has no intention of sharing with other idols. Then how much does God value his names? In Exodus chapter 20, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuse his names. He said this after Exodus. He will, when he gave the Ten Commandments, Ten Commandments to Moses, the first command he delivered was this. When our Lord Jesus Christ teaches us to pray, this is what he says he must pray at the very beginning. In the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 9 says, Today's scripture is this. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. When he gave the first commandments, he told us to honor his name. And when Jesus came to us, he, Jesus also taught us that the exaltation of God's name and the glorification of his name are the first things we should pray for. The Bible teaches us that not honoring His name and what God values most and what we are not doing, what we ought to do, that is a sin. In many parts of the Bible, Scripture, God clearly states that not honoring His name is a sin. In the book of Deuteronomy, He says, If you do not carefully follow, the Lord will send fearful plagues on you and your descendants, harsh and prolonged disasters, and severe and lingered illness. These are the words of Malachi. In Malachi chapter 2 verse 2 says, said, says the Lord Almighty, I will send a curse upon you and I will curse you your blessings. Yes, I have already cursed them because you have not set your heart to honor me. In this way, God honors his own name. So he turns all the blessings into curses. He states this. He honors his own names. He honors, respects, cherishes, and exalts his own name for himself. 
He cannot bear to have his name slandered or dis despised. So what should be done to dishonor God's God and causes God's name to be taken in vain? In other words, when do when we do something, does God feel that his honor has been tarnished and his and that his name has been insulted at the same time? This is a question for us to think about. The ancient Israelites understood this command as not to take God's name in vain, as saying that we should not speak or write God's name directly. So they did not use or spoke the name of Jehovah, Yahweh, directly. They took the words directly to themselves. Nowadays, people call God by the name of Jehovah, Yahweh, but in fact, no one actually knew exactly how the name of God gave the Israelites should be pronounced because they did not and they never actually spoke, explicitly spoken and called out his name. An interesting story is told about God's name. In the old days, to make a Bible, you had to write on the goat sheepskin as a paper with the brush. There was a person reading the Bible and a person writing it down. Writing the Bible was a job for the scribes. When God's name appeared in, while copying the Bible, the person who would speak would not say anything. He would pray quietly without calling out or writing his name or doing anything, staying silent. Or sometimes stop completely and goes out to take a bath and then leaves the room completely. When God, so they took that God's name serious and did not dare to speak of the name. Or sometimes they actually called it Adonai, named it something else, so that they would not verbally speak out God's name. They thought it was a sin to call out the name. When we are writing in Hebrews, only the consonants are written out of the spelling, and the vowels are described in a way in the reader attached them and reads them down. For example, if there is a sign called the parkway in English, it is spelled out as P-A-R-K-W-A-Y. That would be, and when we actually write this in this Hebrew way, it would be shortened down to P-K-W-Y. But then people will actually read it as parkway. Actually, English people does this too. leaving out the vowels and writing down on only the uh, consonants. But after some times, when the Hebrews actually used this method to write down the name, they actually wrote down God's name without the vowels, so they did not know exactly how to pronounce the name of God. For thousands of years, God's name was not actually spoken or pronounced, so they did not know how and which vowels were actually added to the same consonants. Now people don't know if we should call God's name by with the correct pronunciations, and the scholars actually predict that um, may perhaps it is called pronounced Yahweh. But now, is it really that it takes this much of effort to honor God's name? Is it to call on God's name or cite it down? Then among the words in Western English these days, 
There are a lot of people who swear by using the word God, Jesus Christ. Perhaps these people are very bold people. They should be aware of their sayings and their words. Do these things really take in the name of God in vain? What honors God's name? First, let's go back to the to the words of Deuteronomy chapter 28, which we re read a little while ago. When I read it earlier, I s skipped a few phrases, but I will read it again. If you do not carefully follow the words of this law, which are written in this book, and do not reverse this glorious and awesome name, the Lord your God, says chapter 28 of Deuteronomy. This sentence can be understood as a parallel phrase of a sentence. The same part is emphasized over and over again. God put a verse that expresses the same thing differently before the word. If, do, if you do not fear the name of Jehovah, the content is he did not keep all the words of, the, of this law and do them. In other words, behavior that does not honor God's name means that God's people do not keep God's words to do it. The same is true in the words of Book of Malachi. If you do not listen, and if you do not set your heart to honor my name, said the Lord Almighty, I will send a curse upon you, and I will curse your, your blessings. Yes, I have already cursed them, because you do not set your heart to honor me. What do you mean by not listening to something and not setting your heart to it? It is the word of God the commandment of God. How do we sanctify to God's name and give glory to God's name? To honor the name of God is for those who believe the Lord to live according to the word of God. The reason God's name is not honored is not that, not that believers insult God or God or those who believe. Perhaps it is natural for those who do not know God to curse God. It is also possible for people who do not know God to curse the church because they have no reasons to, to take high of people who, who believe God or to go to church. But those who believe in God must be different. Those who believe in God must show that in by in their actions they, they are different. You have to show the difference with your actions. God is enduring God is not enduring that those who do not know God who fail to give glory to His name because they do not know God. But He does not tolerate the failure of those who know God and of His people to raise the glory due to His name. He regards it as a disgrace to God that God's people do not take God's words to His heart and do not live according to his word. Secondly, there are things that God considers to be an insult to his name. It shows in the book of Malachi chapter 1. A son honors his father and a servant his master. If I am a father, where is the honor due me? If I am a master, where is the respect due me? Says the Lord Almighty, Is it you, O priests, who show contempt for my name? But you ask, How have you, how have we shown contempt for your name? God speaks to the priests, says, Where is, you, where is your respect for me? Where, where is... Where is your honor for me? 
And then they say, "No, when we, when do we not despise you?" They said, "God said, but you profane by saying the Lord's table. It is defiled, and its food is contemptible." These are the words of God of warning the priests and the people who do not offer anything that is perfect to God. They, but they only, did, they did not care about what is dirty, bruised, and wrong. When we are dealing with God, when we are, when we are serving God, we should give what is most valuable. Only then. God comes with honor. This is what God wants, and this is what God, on what is what honors God the most. This can be understood from the Old Testament's point of view, as the meaning of giving offering to the God, the as the most flawless and most precious. But it goes one step further and speaks of our entire posture and attitude. When we give worship through online services, we have been doing this for over two years already. There may be people who attend while lying down, like watching a movie or eating something comfortably. Of course, you can attend the service online and do things, and this can be difficult. Difficult or. Or there may be different situations where you might be wrestling with the children, or different circumstances that may come in the way. But I don't think God would appreciate this attitude. Our indolences, our human nature, can constantly produce such an attitude. But the true worshiper of God will be rightly and fully present to the Lord. Even online, God is intolerant when He sees sees Him as a secondary, less important. Especially when we, when us believers, His children, treats treats Him as less important. Worshiping through the internet is inevitably a temporary situation. That is why God told us to get together and have a complete worship service. The door of the church are now gradually opening up. I pray that the situations will improve so that the member of the online worship service can gradually come out to the sanctuary, and we can present ourselves fully to honor God. The third, the failure. Of God's name clearly shows in the in the work of Zechariah chapter thirteen. You must die because you have told lies in the Lord's name. God does not bear situations where His names are used to lie or swear falsely using His name, because this is more than just lying. It is an act of using God's name for your own gain. Swearing with God's name that I swear this is true with God's name, that is sinning God. That is lying to people, and that is also using God's name. The statement not to lie in the name of Jehovah can be extended to ex- include any action or attitude in which we live for the benefit of one's use of God's name. We can do business. We can work hard in our lives, but we should not try to profit from the use of God's name. This is not the name used for such places. This is dishonoring His name. Often we can say that we use, we do this or that in our business to do God's work. Of course, the motivation is good. But if it becomes a means of earning money, of other things, putting other things first, it is to dishonor the name of God. 
often some people say, if this all works well, I will give everything to God. I will give glory to God. But if you use God's name to in, to justify your business, that is a sin. If you really do business to do God's work, you must give all the profit of your business to God. Otherwise, it will be lying and using the name of God for his own gain. God cannot stand this. Then what kind of blessings are there for those who fear the name of God? In the book of Malachi, chapter 3 says, Then those who fear the Lord talked, talked with each other, and the Lord listened and heard. A scroll of remembrance was written in his presence concerning those who fear the Lord and honor his name. In Malachi, chapter 4 says, but for you who reverse my name, the sun of righteousness will rise with heal healing in its wings, and you will go out and leap like calves released from the stalls. For those who fear the Lord, God's work of life takes place. The life-giving spirit of God invigorates all of him, and as the rising sun shines its rays and breathes, life into all life, so is the healing way. God remembers their names and writing down their names in memoirs in the Book of Remembers. These were the first words, first things the Lord actually said to them. This is the blessing of God. When Jesus first taught the prayer, how we should pray to the God, Jesus said, Heavenly Father, hallowed be your name. The Lord taught us through this prayer that we are what we must do, that our believers must exalt his name. It is the first of our prayers. It is the first thing that he taught us. As we pray like this, we take the words into our hearts. We will exalt your name, our God, our Lord. Our church is a community gathering in the name of the Lord. The Lord said, Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Also, we are those who call on the name of the Lord and are saved according to the words. Whoever calls the name of the Lord will be saved. Like Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, we are the ones who built altars to Jehovah and called on his names for salvation. Also, they go one step further and do everything under the name of the Lord. As the book of Colossians says, and whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let us give the glory worthy to God's name. Let us call on His name, worship Him alone, and give Him the glory worthy of His name. The Lord encourages us today through the word of Psalm. In chapter 66, All the earth make a joyful sound to God. Praise and glorify the glory of His name. Let us pray. Dear God, I only want to exalt Your name. I want to exalt the name of the Lord by putting the word of the God, 
God in my heart and putting it into practice. Let me serve you with the most precious thing worthy of your name. Please do not take your name in vain or use your name for my own gain. Only call on the name of the Lord who saves and let us praise the name of the Lord who wants us to be saved and be worshipped. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, the precious name you gave to us. Amen.